Now, let's take a look at some bad, good, great examples. The bad examples are all from Google provided templates. So the problem, this YouTube template is cluttered. It's very much cluttered. They are trying to place everything on a single page. And remember, pages are free. Right? You don't have to put everything on a single page. The actual numbers are truncated. There is no context on the charts that they're showing. Sometimes there is no contrast even for us. There is a heat map, which I don't know why it's even there because we I cannot read them. The actual titles are truncated. The biggest title here should be in a large, it, it is so small. And it just tries to show many things at the same time. And it is completely useless. It's for showing off. It uses the colors of the brand, but it doesn't serve any, it doesn't serve the visitor, right? It's just trying to create something beautiful, which is not as useful. Another example, again, this one, Google Ads from Google. Everything on a single page. Why? It's clear that the focus of this section is on click through. This section is on conversion rate. This section is pay per click. And these are different things to look for. And they could, each one of these sections, it could have been on its own page with more room, with more context, and visualized in a much better way. But the first page to just show as a hub with maybe KPIs and the links to different pages. Okay. Another bad example, again, Google Merchandise Store by Google. And a pie chart for, I don't know, cities, which basically every city is other because <laughs> they couldn't be shown here. And uh, yeah, again, not using pages, not showing anything meaningful, and basically it doesn't serve the viewer, right? Now some good layout. Good layout is also from Google, which is good. So it's a very good example. It's a single page, but it has something that I have to talk about, which are really good and good best practices. The page is actually, this one is divided into sections, right? Latest results and history, right? Two completely different sections with the headers and room around each. Each one of them has a title. The charts are clean. The colors are consistent. So Clinton here is blue, here is blue, Trump is red. Undecided and other, which are unimportant for reference. They are not as significant as the main people who are competing. Gray color is used for them to make them insignificant compared to the actuals, these two. And the dating ratio here is high on this, on this report overall. And these lines could have been eliminated, but otherwise it is nice. So it is not, it's using colors the right way and there's some white room for the, for the charts to breeze actually. So this is a good one. It can be improved, but it's overall, it's a very good. And one of the best examples that I've ever seen is again from Google. It is Core Web Vitals. You can, when you access this report example, you can click here and actually see the report. But this one is not a single page. This one, the topics are organized in different pages. So connection, device distribution, unload different. So each different topic in its is in its own page. Now, each page is divided into sections. So we have this section, there, there are room between different sections. They have titles. Not only they have titles, they have subtitles with explanation, what this section is all about with links for the user to get more information if they want to. So it is really great way of presenting data. And with all of that, every one of these sections only has one chart. The colors are being used consistently. Red is always full. The colors are being used purposefully. So green has a good meaning. This is warning. This is bad. White space is used very well. And the data ink ratio is very high. This is one of the best examples of report layout that I've seen. It is much more simpler than the first one. And I'm sure the most people who tried to design these templates they put time and effort, but one of them put their time and effort mostly in trying to figure out how to structure 
in the report and what to do for the viewer. But the other person tried to just create something beautiful and on brand with YouTube brand. So these are the things to keep in mind. If there's any questions or comments, I would be happy to hear. How do you do the AI go with the AI to hide and to show something behind? Good question, good question. So this one, where was it? This one, yeah. So this is also a community visualization, this one. And this is called Templar Pro. This is basically a community visualization that allows you to use HTML and CSS in this. There's nothing else. You, when you load it, it's empty, but you can put any kind of HTML that you want and any kind of CSS that you want within it. The website for that is, I guess you already know it or heard about it, Templar Bot Pro, this one. It's also free. You can use it and you can load it just like the other community components, right? You put the manifest part here under build your own visualization and you will have access to it. And then you can simply copy and paste these codes from here. Or if you have any other code or if you find code on the internet, there are lots of examples for like toggles with CSS only toggles because this doesn't support JavaScript right now. You can just use CSS and HTML to achieve that. But you can just copy this one if you want. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Any other questions? Let me go to the recap. Okay. Let's recap today's session. I talked a lot again about data visualization best practices, choosing the right chart for the story we want to tell, adding context with chart reference line, applying conditional formatting to communicate the status of a metric, using colors purposefully and consistently, avoiding distractions by increasing data ink ratio and we figure out what data ink is, telling, not just showing, and increasing the clarity of what we're presenting on a report. And we also, at, at the end, we looked at some layout best practices and worst practices as well to compare them together. Next, we have data visualization is styling like a pro. So basically today we just talk about what should we do. And sometimes we show how to do it. But the next session would be basically how to do things in data studio style-wise, how to apply different kind of styling, what tools do we have access to, and how to actually achieve it.